Our Haftorah, as Jacob just read, brings us the searing words of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah lived in the 8th century BCE, a time when the Assyrian Empire conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, bringing that kingdom to an end and sending many of its inhabitants into exile. While Isaiah never witnessed the Babylonian conquest of Judea, the southern kingdom, and the destruction of the first temple, he clearly feared for the safety of the remaining Jewish nation. Isaiah receives a vision, a chazon, from God, hence the name for this Shabbat, Shabbat Chazon. The vision tells of the devastation that is coming to Jerusalem. Artachem Shemama, your land is a waste, your cities burnt down, fair Zion is left like a booth, a sukkah in a vineyard, like a hut in a cucumber field, like a city beleaguered. Every head is ailing and every heart is sick. The poetry here is striking. The images point to a city that has been laid waste, left desolate and abandoned, its remaining residents traumatized, enduring physical and emotional pain. Though we're reading words composed more than 2,700 years ago, we could also be talking about Israel today. We too lament, we feel isolated in the world, our hearts ache with grief over our unspeakable loss of life. But Isaiah does not only warn of catastrophe. The prophet tells his people that the old sacrificial system is no longer viable as the sole means of serving God. We are in crisis, Isaiah says. Our old ways of thinking must evolve. God is not interested in, God is even offended by our rituals because we're failing in our ethical behavior. Our sacrifices, our meticulous performance of rituals in the temple become meaningless, the prophet insists, if that same high standard of behavior is not reflected in our day-to-day -day acts outside the temple. In this intensely felt oration, Isaiah articulates what God must be feeling. Lama li rov zivchechem, what, have I, what need have I of all your sacrifices, says God. Your new moons and fixed seasons fill me with loathing. They've become a burden to me. I cannot endure them. Though you pray at length, I will not listen. Your hands are stained with crime. Literally, they are filled with blood. Yedechem damim maleu. Isaiah offers a new vision for the Israelites and for us, a spiritual path back to God, to social cohesion, and the best of who we are. It's a path that does not focus on the grandeur of the temple or the vicarious performance of ritual, priests offering sacrifices to God on the people's behalf. The new system calls on every individual instead to reconstruct society from the bottom up and return to the Torah's ethical demands. For that is the true essence of avodah, of service to God. Limdu heitev dirshu mishpat ashru chamotz shiftu yatom rivu almana. Learn to do good, says Isaiah. Devote yourself to justice. Aid the wronged. Uphold the rights of the orphan. Defend the cause of the widow. From our vantage point, 2,000 years after the temple's destruction, it's hard to appreciate just how significant Isaiah's words were. He told his people that being punctilious about ritual but behaving immorally was an affront to God. He put ethics front and center, made it the foundation of Jewish practice. He taught that it's not beautiful buildings but a beautiful, but a beautiful character that matters to the Holy One. And in taking this step, truly radical in his time, he gave his people a way of surviving the catastrophe that was coming, the psychological and spiritual trauma of the temple's destruction. Isaiah's message lives on today. In my view, it remains the essence of Judaism. What's more, his message demonstrates how our people have survived and how we too can survive our own failures and disappointments. It's a message rooted in courage and creativity, not just the creativity of a poet dreaming up new metaphors, but the daring imagination of a visionary, a person willing to envision new ways of being in the world. On this Shabbat Chazon, for all of us, I pray that we as Am Yisrael, together with the Palestinian people as well, can create a new vision of a Zionist future, a vision that encompasses our historic and spiritual attachment to the land of Israel, and one that makes room for Palestinian national aspirations alongside our own a vision that renounces violence and hatred, 
a vision that honors the dignity of all life and ensures peace and justice for every person in this land. Isaiah's words call us to acknowledge in the midst of massive suffering and destruction that the old ways of thinking are not working any longer. The either or, us or them way of thinking leads to mutual destruction. This is a time for bold visionaries on both sides to come forward and speak out. Every Shabbat, when we put the Torah away in the Aron, we sing the penultimate verse of Echa, asking God, Chadesh Yamenu Kikedem, renew our days as of old. At the end of the sorrowful book of Lamentations, composed in the wake of the temple's destruction, comes a moment of purest hope, Chadesh Yamenu, renew us every day, give us new strength, new courage, and new faith that we can overcome a disappointing past and achieve a better future. Isaiah's vision is a beautiful example of the work of renewal. He showed his people a way forward. He made them believe they had the capacity to transcend sorrow and build something new and better. And every day since October 7th, we've seen the Israeli people doing just that. They are rising to the challenge, fighting for the hostages to come home, caring for those in the north who have been driven from their homes, courageously defending their lives and serving their country, finding strength in community and shared history and searching for hope. The temple was destroyed, Judaism changed, and because it changed, it lived on. Our collective story goes on today, and so do our individual stories, thanks to the miracle of renewal. And so we pray today, joining our voices with those who came before us, Chadesh Yamenu, renew us every day. Give us the strength to see new visions and to go forward in hope. Shabbat Shalom.